did a course on uh, the food supply and food industry in Taiwan. Well, it's a very specific thing. They, they are particularly affected by food contamination, um, and they were even impacted by a few scandals that occurred a few years ago. So they're very cognizant about the fact that food security is an important matter. Not that it's not in the United States, it's not where the emphasis would be. So you have to look at what are some of the historical aspects that are affecting people in, in a particular industry. I just gave you an example where that it mattered to them quite a bit. So they are now that much more transparent as to where the food was grown, where, where was it transported, what kinds of insecticides or herbicides were used. All that is shared with the people in a much more transparent man manner. And, and we may think that's kind of something we do all the time in the United States, but maybe that's not where the emphasis is because we, uh, we take for granted certain things, whereas other places they may not uh, want to, and then we have to address it right from their perspective. The companies are always looking to have the, the latest skills and latest knowledge of the core areas they're addressing. And if they fall behind, it's a competitive disadvantage. So when you say what, what is in it for them, it's everything. Um, the skills and knowledge are what people rely on to not only excel themselves from previous times, but also to excel against their competitors. And in a way, when we share the latest, they have to then utilize it to the, to, to the best advantage. And that's what they do generally, is what they take from us, they apply to their conditions, and they come back and then replenish their knowledge because they want to be on a continuous cycle of, of learning, which is something that's, as I said, because of the, the way the technology moves nowadays, uh, in terms of obsolescence of knowledge that you gained not too long ago, you really have to keep at the cutting edge. And I think that's what people look to MIT. So some of the areas that we address and that we, we are known for are innovation. Innovation is an area that really people look to MIT. So we have lots of courses that address innovation, design thinking, entrepreneurship. Those are kind of core uh, aspects that are associated with MIT. They're, they're in fact called part of MIT's DNA. And, and so we take advantage of that aspect of where we're known and where people are wanting knowledge from MIT specifically, and we capitalize on that. Well, the, the areas that, if you're talking about traditional classroom instruction, these are short intensive courses that are two to five days long, mostly offered in the summer. There are 50 plus courses that we offer uh, spanning all technology areas that MIT addresses. Um, and, and in fact, what we do with, with them is we also turn them into custom programs for certain specific uh, clients that are needing something specific for them, as opposed to what is generic and offered on an open enrollment basis. We, we then s sometimes utilize the content to customize it for corporations. Uh, that's our other activity that we do. Well, it could be things like cybersecurity, that, they, that, that certain people have certain concerns. Uh, crisis management is another one that could be lots of different areas of crisis that can occur in a company setting. But some people may be interested in, in uh, the cyber aspects of it rather than physical security aspects of it. That's what I mean by customization. What are your uh, hot buttons and how can we address them? So it's, it's really using some of the content and making it more relevant to their specific needs rather than reinventing the content itself. It's more customizing it for their particular situation.